the selectmen appointed three members of the commission and the remaining six members were elected by the voters in, in November. This is the second hearing that we've held. We're really just getting underway in this process. But um, our purpose here is to obtain input from everyone, everyone in, that's a resident of this town. If there's any way we can knock on your door or reach out to you or whatever it takes, we would really like some input. Our goal is to, um, at this point in time, is to listen and to study and to research and to do what the folks in town want to see done. Um, a municipal charter, just background, is it's the equivalent of a local constitution. Basically, it governs the form of municipal government and the general responsibilities and administrative powers of the legislative body. Um, the town is authorized to adopt or amend a charter on all matters not prohibited by constitutional law, which are local and municipal in character. And it's important to note that um, charters may address matters as minor as just procedural matters, or they can reflect um, things as significant as a change in the form of government. That's not the only purpose of a charter, though. Um, so you can have a charter without changing whether you have a town meeting or however you want to do it, um, whatever the voters decide. That's just one element of the things that would be considered in creating a charter. Um, a charter. Uh, this is the only way changes really can be made in municipal government is by a charter commission. And it's important again to stress that if this commission should recommend moving forward with the adoption of a charter, the matter will then be placed on the ballot for approval by voters. It's not a decision we make. It's not a decision that the selectmen make. It's the decision that the voters of the town make. So I just really need to be clear about that. Um, that's what our goal is. We just want to listen. We want to observe. We want to learn. And we want to do, do the job that we were elected in. So that's, that's what the goal is here. So what we would like to do is hear your thoughts. And here are some examples of the type of things we're looking for. Um, is there value in having a charter? Does anyone have anything in mind that would be of value? Um, sometimes there are issues like ethics and recalls, conflicts of interest, things like that can only be addressed through a charter. Um, are there other ways we can improve talks with government? Are there ways that public participation can be increased? Um, and of course, the, the issue that everyone seems focused on is, are you uh, satisfied with our current form of government? Why or why not? Um, you attend town meeting, why or why not? Again, just keep in mind that that's one aspect of what a charter is about, but it's an important one. And we want to hear everything. So we've certainly, um, you've heard more than enough from me. So I will, um, call the public hearing to order and entertain. I would ask people coming up to please very clearly state your name and address because um, our secretary is um, remote. So if you could just do that for her, that would be wonderful. And I, it's all yours. Excuse me, Pam, oh, may I just, a second that please that I'm trying to catch everybody's name and address remotely here, so it would be helpful if people would be careful to say that and secondly is mark uh, recording this for us. Yes, we are and it will also be put on YouTube channels mark okay perfect, thank you very much I appreciate that appreciate everybody's help. Um, whoever feels the, the urge to be the first person please. <laughs> as well. <laughs> uh, um, my name is Jim Byrne. Uh, like the pub, no S, no relation, unfortunately. 
Um, um, I live at 11 Jean Drive. And um, I was on the last charter commission many years ago. And um, I just want to commend the uh, town government review committee report. I had a finally chance to, to go through it again. And it's just really clear and simple, and I really liked it. So thank you. I know. Are you, are you Matt? Right? Yeah, I heard that. you were on that committee. So and Ruth, I think was. So thank you for the work that you that you did. It's it's really good. It really kind of spells it out. Um, and I, you know, it's funny being on the last charter commission. It was very controversial. There's a lot of people that feel that it's it's you're choosing between town meeting or you're choosing between town council, and. Um, you can do anything really. Um, you can do beyond this. I mean, we, we even talked about at one point, uh, not so much on the commission, but you could do a representative town meeting where you could have elected representatives and uh, they do it a lot in Massachusetts. So there's a lot of options and you can do some sort of a hybrid. There's so many things you can do. Um, so I just want to kind of comment a little bit about just some of my thoughts. Um, you know, take your time, obviously listen. And that's what you're doing, and it sounds like you're already doing that already, which is which is the first thing. Um, you know, I feel just in regards to page two of the Thompson Government Review Committee report, uh, I do strongly favor a recall. I really feel that's important. We've had issues in the past in town, and you know, other towns have had some issues, but to make it really difficult, to make it not petty and you know, there's a, there's been debate about well, we shouldn't have it at all, but really the only way to get somebody out of office is assassination, <laughs> literally. So, I mean, that's not. We want to give the people an alternate choice. I'm not saying that's what we should do, or you know, um, I don't favor that obviously. But really, that's that's the choice. Um, so we want to we want to give the people some option, but make it please make it very difficult. Um, also, I, I had a question about grants because the town um, had, had put this, uh, the committee had put this, and I know there was discussion, I had mentioned in the last, um, and I don't know if there were issues in obtaining grants for the town in the past, um, and if that's something that we really need to look at. Uh, I know there was discussion, so obviously that has to go through a charter in order to do certain things, so I would be strongly in favor of that. And then, you know, I, just to, to talk from a conceptual standpoint, um, there are a lot of people that can't go to town meeting. They're homebound. I work in home health. They just can't go and they can't register a vote. So that's a big issue. Obviously, we can't do um, absentee ballots in town meeting. So how do you reconcile that, right? How do you reconcile that? So you could do a town council, and that gives everybody equality. Um, however, you know, I, I recognize that, that people love town meeting. So I had conflict of this when I was on the, on the commission because I know how much people love it and I know it's a voice and you can get up there and speak at the microphone. So how do you, is there, is there a middle step that you can take? Can you, the charter tried to do that, the last charter where you had some backup of, uh, of a referendum. So, the, you know, it's, it's, there's many different options to do it. I feel that if you can do something to try to make it easier for people to have a voice in their own government that, that can't show up at a town meeting, you know, that, that's where I'm speaking from because they can't come to this podium and speak. I guess they could do it on Zoom. So maybe technology will solve this. I don't know. I mean, there's some way to do that. I, I really don't know what the law is, but, um, but I'm speaking really for the homebound today that want to come and go to town meeting. Thank you for your hard work. I don't the left turn, but thank you. Thank you. Hi, Ruth Lyons talks to me. As I have spoken before, I am all for town meeting. And because I feel it gives us the freedom to get up and speak. I don't want to see council. I don't want to see a council if we should come. If that should happen, it should be everybody. There shouldn't be parties involved at all, especially where we're so divisive right now. It should be freedom. I totally, totally disagree about people having access to town meeting. People have access to town meeting in different ways, whether it be through the selectmen, or have somebody go and speak for them. 
even at our board meetings, all of us get communications all the time. We read them publicly for the people that contact us that have a concern. So I, I totally disagree with that. I also know if there's an issue, it's been proven in the past, a big issue where the town is concerned, whether it be higher taxes or something big that might affect something in the town, tons of thousands, a thousand people will come out. We've had to use a gym before because of those issues. And it's happened more than once. Uh, so maybe not a thousand, but five or 600. But if people are pretty satisfied, if not, they contact us. Now on recall, I, I don't think that should be a reason. I think uh, you go to the voting box, just like we do for our representatives, our congressmen and stuff, and we don't vote for them, as simple as that. And a recall also public opinion can force a person to resign. I don't agree with that kind of power, I guess. And that's what fears, uh, fears me the most, that a few people will speak for everybody. Now, there was an article in the Times Record a few days ago under the editorial where a person felt they went before a council, whether they were right or wrong, I wasn't there, but they felt they were almost jeered at from the council because of what they were saying. So they felt very uncomfortable to the point they wrote a big editorial and thing. The other thing is, I know the town manager well in Lisbon. I talked to many people there. A few years ago, they went council. If they had to do it over again, they would not have done that. She has left or is leaving and going to North Yarmouth because she really wants to go back working for selectmen versus a council. So those are some of the things I feel. I, my own passion, it's not because I'm a selectman, it's because I'm a resident Ruth Lyons and I have a passion for town meeting and democracy for people to get up and speak. A woman spoke the last meeting we had and she said, and I kind of liked her idea. She said she loved town meeting, but it was hard where she had children. But this time where it was outside, she was able to take her children. That's a thought. You know, there's different reasons. People are very, very busy. And believe me, no more than nine or 10 people are gonna show up at a council meeting. And I heard it also say the last meeting, sections of town needed representation. The board of selectmen represent everybody <clears throat> in town. They're not a party, they're not. They represent everybody and everybody can come to them or everyone. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Nancy Randolph with Paul Montague. Okay. <laughs> so you can just hear me, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. So I just want to speak and say that I am one of those people that go to most every town meeting. I've missed a few recently, but mostly I go all the time. But it's my choice to go or not to go and to speak or not to speak. Um, I believe that it is the truest form of democracy and all of us participate whether we attend or not when we go to town meeting and our lack of attendance is actually a vote that we your other people will make our uh the choices and it will be a good choice and that's what i think has been happening recently is people are pretty satisfied with the way the town of Topson is going and i think that's what we should be looking at and not try to fix something that's not broken um i i've never used that term before and i've heard it so much in the last 30 years but in this in this instance, I think we should not attempt to go through a charter commission and mess up everything that is good and working in the town of Topsom. And that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, your street address, Nancy. Oh, 13 Williams Drive. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. Okay. Come on up. Linda Baker, One Home Place. Um, first of all, I do want to thank you all. You've worked very hard a lot of time, and we really appreciate uh, as as your public, we do appreciate that a great deal. About every 10 years, 12 years, it does come up. Um, it is talked about. But in reality, I think part of what makes Topsom one of the finest towns in the state is exactly this, exactly what's going on. We do talk about it. We do all have input. I absolutely believe in my heart of hearts that a um, town meeting is the finest, purest form of democracy. Everybody does have rights. I do understand and I echo the thoughts and concerns of Mr. Byrne, um, but I think there have to be, a, there has to be, um, especially with technology progressing the way it is, there have to be ways to include those people. But our selectmen are elected by us, generally speaking, it's non-political. They vet things for us, they review things, um, they recommend, they're not making our decision. Certainly in years past, as Mrs. Lyon said, there have been tremendous outpouring of um, people attending for a specific issue maybe on the warrant. And then people have been known to get up and leave because their issue has been intended to. Again, that is their right. We have, God love us, inalienable rights and let us please keep those. I strongly support the maintaining of of town meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much. We've got Leslie Mortimer out front. Okay. Process it. And let's need your um, address, please. <clears throat> okay, there I am. Um, I apologize, I'm a little late to the meeting, um, but so I don't really know what's been said so far, but I um, would like to advocate for letting the residents vote. I understand the history of town meeting and it's a really proud tradition in the state of Maine. But in my case, for example, um, when I lived in Fitzburg and also since I've lived in Topsom, I worked in the evenings and I could not attend town meetings. And um, I'm not really comfortable with the few, the small number of people who I understand typically attend town meetings making decisions for the rest of us. Um, I did attend a town meeting in Phippsburg the first year I moved here, which is back in 2007, and it was fascinating. I loved being there. Um, I was on the staff at the Patent Free Library at that time, and Phippsburg was one of the towns that funded us, so it was important for as many staff to be there as possible. But I have to tell you that spending three hours of my time at a meeting when, especially when the library budget was the last thing on the warrant was incredibly frustrating. And, um, and the fact that the, at that time anyway, the way they counted votes was by show of hands. And the count had to be done like three or four times because they kept getting a different number every time the vote was taken. So I, I, I am in strongly in favor of letting us just vote um, like we do, you know, on school budgets for um, presidential elections and so on every four years. Um, and I think, uh, and I don't know if y'all have discussed um, Zoom for town meeting. If that's an option, I would be more open to town mo to attending. But um, like I said to me, I just don't think it's it's not very democratic to have town meeting, especially in this day and age. I mean, things are a lot different than they were when this whole um, tradition was uh, started. So, oh, and my address, I'm at eight Nathan Way. Thank you. 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 Th
Thank you so much, Leslie. All right. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Thanks. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jim Burak. I live at 35 Philippon Drive. Um, so yeah, I, I do understand what it's like to be busy. Some of you folks know that I've, I've, I've been around this town and I've tried to make a difference in a lot of ways, in a lot of places. Um, just like everyone else, I got home from work and I got dinner on a table for my family and I came here to this meeting. This is what I do when I want to speak my mind. The very first town meeting I went to was when the library was being talked about being built on Foresight Road. The gymnasium at the old high school was packed. People showed up and spoke their mind. I was amazed by our government because I was from Virginia and I was not completely and fully understanding of how our government works here in the town of Thompson, and I love it. The only time you see me is when I have something to say. I usually don't come to the meetings if everything is going well in the way I feel it's going. And at that point, I know how to get a hold of my selectmen. Sometimes I knock on their door, I'll call, I see them at the transfer station. I make myself known to everyone and I let them know how I feel. I like being able to come to a meeting and speak my mind. We had a budget proposal meeting once. I came to the microphone and made a motion that we voted on each item line by line. Sorry, Dave, for doing that, but I was part of that. The motion was passed and we sat there for a very long time and we handled this, but I have a voice. I don't want my voice taken away. I really enjoy being part of this town I'm glad that my son's here living here. And I, I want my government to stay as it is. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Dan Comesco. I'm from uh, 7 Mary Meeting Drive. Um, and the first thing I'd like to do is, uh, is thank Nancy Randolph for stealing my thunder tonight is the uh, very first thing I have on my notes is, if it's not broken, don't fix it. That's one of the things that I've learned a long time ago. Um, what I would ask this committee to do is really look at our current government, not make rash decisions, but find out, is it really broken? I've been here since 1993, um, love Topsom. I love the idea that the town um, I like the idea that uh, the census in 2020 has us at 66.23, main demographics has us at 96.50, but somewhere along the line, <laughs> around 8,000 people, we've got five select people uh, taking care of us. And one thing I like about our select people is that they don't run by political party. They run by who they are. They run because they care about Topsom. They don't care about a particular district. They care about Topsom. If I have any issues, which I've had in the past 20 odd years, I know I can talk to any of the selectmen um, and, and they're representing me as a member of Topsom, not as a member of a small district of Topsom. Uh, one of the complaints that I heard in the last meeting, one of the biggest objections um, that the selectmen are represented all of Topsom, is, but we don't have specific areas of Topsom represented by people. Like I live in Arbor <coughs> Avenue subdivision. Someone would say, gee, that should be a district and I should have a representative just from Arbor Avenue. I don't like that idea. If someone is, feels underrepresented, then by all means, they can run on their own and represent their own district. Nothing stops anybody in Topsom from running uh, for one of these select people positions. Um, I would ask that this committee look at not necessarily throwing the baby out with the bathwater, but looking at our current government, maybe we can tweak it. Maybe there are some things that we can do without having to do a whole new charter, but just tweaking. Um, I've heard that there's a problem with town meetings on um, during the weekday, week, 
at evening um, when I was a youngster, more years ago than I care to remember, um, my town here in Maine held a town meeting and it was Saturday morning, began at nine o'clock in the morning. There was a place in the balcony for children to attend. Um, when I was in, in high school, elementary school, my parents took me to the town meeting, made me sit up in the, in the peanut gallery, but I got an idea of what town meetings were all about, the voice of the people. I heard that here tonight. I love the voice of the people. Um, and I found here at town meetings that if something, again, echoing comments, if something is important enough, people will turn out. Um, I, would, I would ask, and one of the problems I have with a town meeting is I always get the warrant way too late and too close to the town meeting uh, in order to do some research. If the warrant could be a week or two earlier so that I could look into some of those things that I might have questions about, it would make help me to be better prepared uh, in order to go to the town meeting. A couple of other uh, adages that have served me well over the years. Um, think and plan long-term and not short-term. If we're doing a charter, you know, we want to make sure that this charter looks forward 15, 20, 30 years, not move from a select person management mode to a town council because, gee, that looks great for the next year or two. Well, sometimes, sometimes we need to be careful of what we wish for because sometimes that's exactly what we get. Thank you. Thank you very much. Some stuff to share. Hi. 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 Hello, my name is Alan Sarvinas. I've been a Thompson resident for about six years now. Um, I entered into a record, a, a group uh, in 2008 that formed uh, to counter the move for a town council. Uh, you can find it on the green pages. Uh, mostly everything in there from 10 years ago uh, seems to, to satisfy the complaints or worries of uh, the current charter. Uh, I wrote this in more bulleted form. Uh, for the regarding wondering if the community has outgrown the town meeting of government, uh, perception wise, Thompson does not close, uh, does not come close to the minimum population requirement under the Maine Ethics Commission. Uh, under Maine Ethics Commission statutes like disclosures, uh, notices on local campaign signs. Um, so I'm assuming uh, since that is driven by population size, it would be addressed by the, the Charter Commission. Um, obviously, if the town lost population, um, as did Winslow, uh, they lost 35% of their population. Um, I don't believe they're going to go from the town council back down to get back to a town, town meeting. Um, town meetings uh, regarding town meetings are sparsely attended, making it easier for special interests. It's also logical to think special interests save money by removing power from its from a community of individuals. So their lobbying efforts are strictly aimed at a few on the council. Uh, it's easier to lobby a handful of council for a majority vote than it is to invest in the organizational efforts to create a civil society project, which are now usually constructed to provide cover for the already lobbied vote. Uh, two, if the citizenry were discontent, they would attend meetings. And with today's technology uh, enhancing the direct communication with point of contacts, the select board would absolutely know if people were ready for such a fundamental change. Uh, is, there, uh, is there a recent instance when a special interest group caused an issue, or is this more of a scare tactic? Regarding efficiency, again, it seems like more of an uh, excuse. Um, who decides what the camp council brings to the people? Uh, but in saying that, there's always built-in loopholes and contractual language for bureaucracy to leverage, so they ultimately pick and choose themselves. Has this board ever not been able to act uh, accordingly and, uh, and on time for the community? Uh, we're going through a pandemic, uh, so I'm thinking if it did not happen in the past two years, then let's not uh, glorify the concern. Regarding the recall, um, again, it's never been required. And at this point with multi-million dollar unions and NGOs able to build herds instantly with social media platforms, the risk of temptation is greater than allowing board members 
to serve ever out, serve out their relatively short short terms. Uh, Winslow is a glimpse into our future under our town council, uh, and I submitted a testimony from a Winslow resident uh, recently from December, <coughs> where the town council uh, brought in a legislation for uh, solar panel farm, uh, brought it in and voted on it immediately without hearing any testimony, and it led to a letter to the editor, which I uh, submitted to the commission. Um, Town meeting selectman form of government uh, is called the purest form of democracy, uh, which immediately questions the mode of the local Democratic Party as to why they are so feverish for switch to a less democratic government. Uh, if we would teach our youth objective US civics with the same creativity and energy as we are seeing other, as we are seeing for other studies, I believe we would have a more participation in local governance. Finally, uh, the, town, the town meeting maintains the idea of an engaged citizenry. I wish I could say that. <laughs> the town meeting maintains the idea of an engaged citizenry, citizenry, which produces the best unified community through the diversity of ideas. Do not throw away the belief because it may be harder to accomplish. I suggest getting out into the community and lock on doors, knocking on doors. Schedule town halls with all political parties and special interest groups. Empower direct confront to break down the inferred misconception, misconceptions, and we may see more willing, more people willing to engage, knowing others are sincere in their respect. Uh, to the Charter Commission, do not take away our ability through town meetings to at least be in an emergency break on town governance in the future. Thank you. Yeah. One comment from everything I'm hearing, keep in mind that as a Charter Commission, we can't make any decisions to take anything or change anything. That's why you're here to tell us what to do. But we, we don't have the authority to change things. It's up to the voters. We can only make recommendations. Uh, Pam, if, please excuse me. Um, I need the address for that speaker, please. Oh, 16 Forest Drive. I'm sorry, 16 what? Forest Drive. Thank you very much. You've got Andy Wallace for that. Hi, Andy Wallace, uh, 284 Parliament Circle. Um, it's interesting listening about the Zoom aspect because, you know, that's the reason why I'm here and uh, because of Zoom. And I think the technology really does enable, though, it, though it's, you know, there are a lot of people who struggle with technology. Um, you know, a lot of people adapt. Most people adapt pretty quickly. So I think that it's a great tool for people who otherwise wouldn't be able to attend any any municipal meeting, including a town meeting. Um, I'm a graduate of Brunswick High School from 1987 and uh, have been a resident of Topsom since 2012. And I, I can't help but feel like we, uh, we as a town and our form of government is something that's worked for a long time. We do run into, I mean, we run into issues and most of the issues that we run into are temporary and they pass, um, you know, after a year of consideration. And I, I really feel like changing the form of government could make it, put us in a position where we make rash decisions or where decisions are made for us um, sort of in, in on a whim or because we feel an urgency at the moment without letting situations develop pass and by the end of a year they're not they're no longer an issue and we haven't thrown uh, uh we haven't thrown a wrench into the system and just you know change something dramatically just because suddenly there's something that we're dealing with i obviously you know speaking specifically on covid and and covid mitigation um but there are other issues ultimately the town hall 
is something that's worked for us for a long time, uh, for, for generations and for, uh, for a century or more here in Maine. And for us to just because we feel an urgency to, to make things different, you know, there's no perfect form of government. And every form of government, as we all can see clearly right now on a, a federal national level, um, specifically, we just because we're struggling with a moment in time in the in the form of government that we've had, we can't just make changes to that for a temporary issue or because we want power or because we don't like the way things are going for the way that we feel we have to stick with what's worked for us it's my it's my belief that you know the people need to have their voice heard and the people need to be the key the the underlying and ultimate decision makers in our own lives and the lives of our community so I, I really think that it is crucially important that we stick with what works, what, it, what has worked, and that we, you know, we not put ourselves in a position where we're making rash decisions for the moment and throwing the baby out with the bathwater because we're in a, a temporary situation. They say, you know, a, a long-term we, we have a, a long-term problem for or a long-term solution for a temporary situation. And I think that that is the position that we put ourselves in where we end up blowing the whole thing up because there are people, you know, maybe me, maybe you, whatever, who in a moment feel like, boy, things should change and every, you know, we should just change everything. And we have to be, be patient. We have to remember what's worked in the past. We have to take into consideration technology for people who can't get there. I'm not there tonight because I'll be at a school board meeting tomorrow night. I have kids and I, you know, I work 12 hours a day driving a tractor trailer starting at 3.30 in the morning. I get it. You know, I know what, I know what busy looks like. Um, but there are ways to do it today. I make meetings during the day on Zoom from my truck, you know, so things can, you know, things work, you know, technology works. If that's, if the, the homebound or people who are busy is, a, is the obstacle or the reason for why we're going to consider changing the system, I, I think it's completely, it's very short-sighted and it's not taking into consideration the gifts that we have through technology in order to keep things the way that they've always worked in the past. Thanks for letting me share. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next we've got Susan. I'm gonna come off mute though. There we are. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, Susan Ray Reeves, 14 Twin Pond Road. Um, I have been really loving the, co the comments. You know, we're, we're not all 100% aligned, but we're all, I think we all love our town. <laughs> and, you know, my feeling about our form of government is it is working. Um, I served on the government review committee. Um, the, the approach that we took, and obviously right now I'm speaking for myself, not for the committee. Uh, the approach we took was not that anything is broken and we were not responding to a pandemic at that point. There was nothing about the pandemic, at least in my memory, which can be fuzzy. <laughs> um, there was nothing about the pandemic that informed our recommendations. Um, there are others here this evening, both on the Charter Commission and not, who were on that government review committee. So correct me if I'm wrong, but that the recommendations to form a Charter Commission 
uh, were not shaped by the pandemic. In my view, they were shaped by, are there things that could be improved? It's not that it's not, it's not broken, but are there aspects of our government that could be improved? Where are some of the weak spots? I think, you know, I love town meeting. At the same time, the times that I've gone to town meeting, sometimes the, you know, in the era of pandemic, the meetings are incredibly short. You don't get a feeling of people speaking and listening to each other. Um, it's a very different experience. It's very efficient, but it's, um, at, whether it's at the high school, um, you know, it, in that setting, I think people do hear each other. But sometimes the issues that come before town meeting are quite complex. And as somebody else has spoken to this evening, we don't get the warrant items to very far in advance. And as far as I know, there is no sort of summary of warrant items that could help people who are not experts um, sort of make a decision about whether or not this is, you know, something to vote in favor of or against. Um, so I think as the issues get more complex, it becomes important for people. I, I mean, I trust the select board. They do a lot of work on our behalf. Um, the question in my mind is, are there areas, and I'll just name a couple of them. You know, the recommendations were in a few areas, whether, they, whether these areas could be improved by having a charter. I would be delighted to keep our form of government intact. But it seems to me that having a charter would give us some flexibility in certain areas. Um, Decision-making around budget is one, not to change the overall budget, not to change taxation, but if it makes sense within the scope of the year between town meetings for the select board to recommend a slight movement of funds from one line to another, as that might be needed or appropriate or a good idea. We can't do that now as far as I understand it. Um, and another um, area would be um, grants, the idea of uh, applying for grants. Sometimes there's some limitations there and ordinances. Sometimes, um, you know, ordinances that are relatively simple I would put that trust in the hands of the select board. We can't do that right now. That requires a charter as far as I understand. So just to summarize, I don't have any sense that things are not working. Could they work a little better? I think so. And that's why I'm just paying, I'm very, um, I, I very much appreciate the time and energy that the Charter Commission is investing. Um, in this effort and the openness that you've shown. Thanks very much. Thank you, Susan. Next, we've got Liz. Hi, this is Liz Armstrong, 41 Elm Street in Topsom. I was at the last meeting and spoke with you all regarding the Topsom Government Improvement Committee report that was um, completed by uh, a committee of people that was formed after the last charter was voted down, uh, decidedly. And I'd like to say that I'm still um, totally in favor of open town meeting in our present form of government, and I really do not think that we need a charter. That said, I do understand, I think I'm correct in this, that uh, state law requires that communities you know, examine whether they should have a charter periodically, like every 10 years. So I, I think in, in reality, the work that this commission is doing is in response to that requirement. But I don't think that any of the things that we've identified, you know, going back to our report, the Topson Government Improvement Committee report, and we're talking about here tonight, can't be solved um, 
through ordinances or adoptions of policy. And I'm looking actually at state statute, Title 30A, Section 2504, which basically says that um, except as otherwise provided by municipalities, ordinance or charters, an elected official of a municipality may be recalled from office pursuant to this section. So the section lays out how you go about um, putting together a petition for recall and the procedures that you have to follow in order to um, try and, and mount a recall. Similarly, uh, there's a statute that's uh, related to conflicts of interest, Title 30A, Section 2605, which basically says that uh, number seven, municipal officers may adopt an ethics policy at their discretion governing the conduct of elected and appointed municipal officials. And in our report, we talked about various communities that had done just that and suggested that the town look at those communities ordinances and consider whether we should adopt a similar ordinance in Topsom. I do not believe you need a charter to do that and state statute seems to underscore that my belief is correct. Um, I think that in reality, all of the work that culminates in town meeting is done in a series of committee meetings by the finance committee, a series of meetings by the select board throughout the course of the year before we go to town meeting. Um, you can participate in those meetings and you can make your thoughts known and you can urge your select people to, you know, maybe reduce the amount of money that's going into a particular budget or increase it. Um, that's exactly kind of what happened a couple of times at town meeting in the past related to buying new police cruisers uh, or having a 50 person or whatever it was, uh, fire department, full time fire department. Um, and, and even for the library, I ran the capital campaign for the library and, you know, trying to get things passed at town meeting for the library, um, you know, was important to me at that time. But, you know, I went to town, I went to the select board every time there was something to report about what we were doing, trying to get the library built, educated the community, educated the select board, turned out the vote, and we have a beautiful library. Uh, I don't think we need a charter to accomplish these kinds of things. I think Topsom has been very progressive. We've got a beautiful municipal building, we've got a beautiful public safety building. We've got a great main street as a result of a lot of committee work. I think that we can uh, do th some things to improve the warrant. And again, in the Topsom Government Improvement Committee, we recommended that we look at what Oregon had been doing with regard to having a very understandable document that explains in layman's simple terms what each thing on the warrant is uh, proposing and the pros and the cons. Similarly, we talked about scheduling town meeting and made some recommendations there. None of those things, you do not need a charter to adopt any of those recommendations. So I think, you know, it's a great exercise. Statute requires that we do it. Thank you for your service. But I think that we can easily remedy the majority of the things people have talked about now for probably at least 15 years through uh, adoption of policy, adoption of ordinances, adoption of practices that are inclusive, like you know, better writing about what the what's on the warrant, um, I, you know, better scheduling, better communication, uh, and we don't need a charter uh, to tell us how to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. No one else online. Okay. My name is Patrick Cohen. I'm at 41 Beaver Pond Road. Uh, it's come up multiple times tonight where people have talked about if it's not broken, don't fix it. Uh, while relevant, I would say that this government here in Thompson is so far from being broken that that's not even a great analogy to use in this situation. I had the opportunity, the experience to be on the finance committee here in Thompson for the past three years. Uh, this year, I'm not on the committee. Uh, and it provided to me a firsthand view of the inner workings of at least a, a significant portion of what takes place here in the government in Thompson. And it was absolutely refreshing those three years being witness to what was taking place uh, with the select board, with the town manager, with the department heads, with members of the community, with the finance committee. Uh, there was opportunity throughout each of the budget cycles for everybody to have their say. There was great debate. Uh, people worked very well together even when there were differing opinions. So I, I, 
I just, things are going so well in this community right now that you don't want to disrupt that. I don't want to disrupt that. Um, Mr. Wallace brought, uh, made one comment that uh, there is no perfect form of government. I agree, but there is a best form of government as far as I'm concerned, and that is self-governance. The town meeting provides an opportunity for self-governance. Uh, and that's coupled with other forms of government within our community, but it is a beautiful thing to safeguard that ability for the, the community members here in Topsom to have their say if they want to have their say. They do have the opportunity to get out there. If they're not able to attend town meeting, there are other opportunities. And as I said, even with the, uh, the budget cycle, there are plenty of opportunities to make your voice heard, but having that final say at the town meeting is a great way, a great check and balance to serve, to make sure that the select board and the finance committee bringing that budget uh, forward is acting in the best interest of the town. There have been years where there's not a great presence at the town meetings. That's not a bad thing. And we've heard a couple of people brought that up to where I look at that as a, a reflection of things going very well oftentimes to where the community members are not upset that, and that there are not things on that ballot that are drawing them to the town meeting. There have also been years, uh, I think three years ago, where there were multiple items on the ballot that did, they, they did, they were cause for many people to a town town meeting. There, when it was, uh, it was, there was a lot of energy there. And that, again, is good. People had their voice heard. Uh, we, it was a long meeting, but everybody that wanted to speak was able to speak. The votes were were made and uh, it, it worked very well, but I, I would hate the idea of giving up that opportunity for self-governance that the town meeting does afford to us as, an, as a community. Uh, there are, as you probably know, there are rumors that are swirling throughout the community as to what uh, some of the intent of this commission as far as moving towards a council. Uh, and I, I would strongly urge that not to be acted upon Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, David Douglas, 19 Forside Road. I'm also a member of the select board for the last 11 years and I've been chairman for the last six. Um, first, I wanna take a minute. Uh, it, what I'll start with first is I am dead set against changing our form of government. And I'm here to say, I will fight every step of the way to protect it. I do not believe we need a charter. I believe just as lives detailed, those can all be handled through town meeting, they can be handled through ordinances and we can move forward that way. That being said, I think it's important that we answer some questions that were put forward tonight, particularly from individuals that have served on um, committees that have put us here, that have put us to this point of making decisions because we think there may be a problem. I've answered some of these already. I'm going to answer them again tonight. Grants, although it was written in the Government Improvement Committee report, there is no issue within the town of Topsom to accept grants by the Board of Select, select Board now. Sorry. We have never missed a request by department heads in my time that I've been on the board. This is bad information that was given to the government review committee. Moving funds around within a budget. The select board has the ability to move funds around specifically for public works emergencies bad snow year or anything like that, we can take in, we can pull money from elsewhere. The way a warrant is formulated in the town of Thompson is you don't vote to approve $84,000 for the codes office. There's a list of 12, 18 departments under general government. And that you know, will be like a $2.3 million item. And I forget the number. You vote, we vote on that bottom number. I don't vote that the library will get X for CMP. I don't vote that, that this group will get X for their, their um, salaries. 
we vote on that bottom number. If there was an emergency, we have that ability to do anything we want within that $2.3 million. We could fund the assessor's office for $2.3 million if we needed to. We don't have to. <laughs> but we, we do have that ability. So when it comes to fire and police, we also have that ability to move from one to the other. So there is no, in, in that respect, I don't believe there is any issue with, um, that we think we need to clean up an issue. Again, this, I don't believe it exists. God forbid tonight this building burned down, okay? We go out of here, something happens, it burns down. <laughs> How quick can we have a town meeting to make a decision? We can have a town meeting by next Tuesday night. It would take the five members of our board to get together at Dunkin' Donuts after we've advertised the meeting, and we can have a town meeting put together up and running within three days. We can adequately advertise it, and I'm not saying we're going to make any decisions in three days to rebuild this building, but what I'm saying is if, just to give you an example of a horrible thing that could happen, what emergency can we react to? This, we can, within three days, we can have a town meeting. Okay. So the, the thought that town meeting slows us up, to me, is a fallacy. <laughs> What I do believe town meeting does is it affords an opportunity for people to marinate ideas, think about it. A council form of government has an agenda in front of them, gets put out seven days prior to their, their meeting, and they act in seven days. Town meeting, not only do we go through months, we'll begin next week um, reviewing the budget for the year, which we won't vote on until May. Um, there's a lot of things and a lot of uh, time for people to think about. Is this important? Is this not important? I heard people say that it would be nice to have more town meetings. Are we missing out on opportunities? I can say in my time that I've been on the, we haven't had a lot of extra town meetings. We do have that ability. I will say I am, I'm not a fan on just the whim throwing out a town meeting. As someone who for the last six years have been, has been the chairman for the town of Thompson Board of Select and Select Board, I can tell you there have been times where the idea has been thrown out that we need to have a special town meeting to discuss X. And those ideas have been bad ideas. Those ideas would have created consternation in town, would have created many issues in town. The last one that I recall, I was standing in the town manager's office, not the current one. It was in July, maybe early August. And there was a push from July and by October to have a special town meeting to allow Crooker to move to the other end of Rickford? Absolutely not. That is not the time that you push to have a special town meeting. So when staff sat and told you that they are missing out on opportunities to, to meet business demand, those are some of the opportunities that were asked for, that within three months, we evaluate that entire process. And here we are now three or four years later we still haven't come to fruition. Nobody's come forward with anything. So having the opportunity to marinate that idea is probably one of the best ones. <coughs> Lastly, um, you know, I think, you know what I am gonna do? I think it was referenced tonight. There was an article and I read it. Nancy Randolph posted this and I'd never read this article. John Resenbrink, around the time of 2008, wrote an article, and I think it was handed to me tonight, I guess. But the very last paragraph in that article was amazingly enlightening to me. And I think it's something that should, all of us should listen to, all of us should think about. A strong local government based directly on the sovereignty of the people is fundamental to self-governance. It ties in with community self-reliance and the basics of life, 
which in turn ties in with a solid and creative foundation for effective democracy at the regional, national, and global levels. John wrote this right after the last attempt at a charter here in the top, town of Thompson, somewhere around 2008. In those words, 13 years ago, wherever we are now, 13, 14 years ago, still apply to as we are right now. We have an opportunity to show and to do what the rest of the world is begging to have the ability, the rest of the country. We are watching it all over the place that nobody is listening to one another. We have that here in Thompson. We need to keep that. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Just one thing I want to say is uh, I heard some things comment on time. The meetings are long. Well, yeah, they can be. But if your issue, you don't want to stay the whole time, you have a, the freedom to leave. But also, once a year, and if you don't have a family or a sports game or something, or somebody elderly at home, it's worth the investment. We all are so concerned with time and hurrying up. And I don't think a time should be a factor at town meeting. Now, there's certain things in there, like if somebody speaks more than twice, and there can be a time limit put on it, and things like that, if the meeting gets too drawn out and the same thing gets said over and over and over. And I just wanted to bring up that point, so it goes in the notes. <laughs> If anyone who hasn't spoken yet that would like to get up, let's see if you speak. I'm Susan Dolan, 22 Barrows Drive, and just here to add a voice to those that want to leave the governments the same as it's been for many years. And my husband as well. Thank you. You want to leave the town or leave your husband the same? <laughs> I believe Nancy Randolph would like to speak again. I'm seeing it in the chat. Oh, her hand's not raised. That way is. So I could even start from the video, but I don't know. So I am probably the only person in Topsom who has served in on the Board of Selectmen in Topsom and the Town Council in Brunswick. So I just want to talk about some of the things that came to us in Brunswick. By the time they came to Brunswick Council, so much of work had been done behind, not behind closed doors so much, but behind the view of the public that when it did come and we needed people to do something differently, Many times the people said, well, Nancy, you seem like the only person to listen. So the council had already made up their mind by the time it came to vote. And even though they had, you know, sometimes they packed the room, there was no change from what the town council wanted to do. And so many times I saw that just too many times for us to live with it. Topsom doesn't want five people to rule the town. We want them to administer our choices that we've made at town meeting. And that's what I want to say. I want to say that we all need to remember that that's what the selectmen do. They administer our choices, our decisions from town meeting, and we get to decide. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I hear more voices out there. I'm sure I do. Yeah. Well, this has been um, 
This has been fantastic. Um, as I say, we are just getting uh, getting the process going here. We've got uh, we we will be meeting on the first and third uh, Wednesdays of each month, subject to change depending on. <laughs> yeah, things like that. Um, and all of the meetings will be on Zoom, I assume. Yes, I think it's been working good enough. Yeah, it's great. And um, I, and there will be opportunity for public comment at the beginning and at the end. Um, we are certainly, again, want to be as open and trans transparent as we possibly can be. And it's really encouraging to hear such a wide variety of thoughtful analysis. And uh, we can see people come to the same conclusions, but for completely different reasons. So um, it's really good to be able to draw the pieces together here. Um, does anyone else, again, we encourage you to uh, keep in touch. This will be an ongoing process. We will have public informational meetings um, throughout. So this will not be the last time, believe me, you'll have a chance to um, be before us. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I might have one more thing I'd like to just add, just by listening to everything that's going on. Um, a mention was made about how many people come to meetings, how many people are involved in voting, but people still have the opportunity and the right to do so, whether they show up or not. Um, to give up that and to then solely give that opportunity to speak to another group of five people or so, you know, but the, the right is still with the with the taxpayers and the citizens of the town. So whether the citizens come today or the citizens come five years from now, they still have the right to do so when they feel it necessary. Just because they're not here tonight doesn't mean that they are giving up their rights 10 years from now if, if something comes up. But if we take that away from them, it's gone. Right. But right now, everyone has the opportunity to come when they feel it necessary. And to take to say only a few people show up to a meeting and then turn around and say, well, we'll give that right to a small charter. And there's still a small group of people making the decision. So I would say leave it with the people. Thank you. Thank you. Who else? Anyone else? Any closing comments? Um, um, yes. I just wanted to thank Mark for setting this up. This is uh, the better, the best Zoom we've had with the OWL set up. I've been able to hear everybody very clearly, and I want to thank you for doing that. Absolutely. You're welcome. Thank you. I echo that. You, and getting everything ready, he's, he's been amazing. He really has. Um, and I want to do one thing while I have an audience because I wanted to do this for a while. And so I appreciate everybody being here. But our esteemed chair of the Charter Commission, Pamela Ohio, was honored by the legislature um, because she retired after 20 years of public service. And she served for 10 years as our Saginaw County Commissioner. And I have a. Manager. I'm sorry, manager, not commissioner. Sorry. Charlie uh, just turned yes. over. <laughs> yes, yes, Charlie just turned over his grade. It's okay, but he's not in right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it says Be it known that we, the members of the Senate and House of Representatives, join in recognizing Pamela Heil of Topsom, who is retiring as Sankahawk County Administrator after nine years of service and over 30 years of public service including eight years as West Bath Town Administrator. We extend our congratulations and best wishes, and now she's in over her head again. <laughs> and be in order that this official, it's that part is not in. Be in order that this official expression of sentiment be set forth with on behalf of the 130th legislature oh and the goodness. people of the state of Maine. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, from the frying pan into the fire. <laughs> Thank you very much. That means more than I can say. Okay. Yeah, we can take the show on the road. Great. All right, then. 
Um, if there are no other public comments, I think we can join, uh, join, adjourn the public hearing. And I would entertain a motion to adjourn our meeting. Yeah, so moved. Acclamation. Thank you all so much for coming out. Yeah. Our next meeting will be February 7th.